In this session on moving shockwave part 3, we're going to learn about the technique to solve problems if the shockwave is moving. In our last session, we learned the basic principle to solve such problems. The main idea is that we have to change their frame of reference so that the shock becomes stationary relative to the new frame. Here, we have a moving shock shown in the original frame fixed to the ground and to the ambient air. We'll refer to this frame as the air frame or the gas frame, which basically means the same thing. This normal shock is shown moving into region 1. The main parameters are U sub S, the shock velocity, the gas velocity V1 equals to 0, and the static pressure and temperature of the air P1 and T1. After the shock passes through the air in region 1, the air changes its properties and becomes region 2. The new properties are the velocity of the air, V2, which has some magnitude now moving towards a shock, and the static pressure and temperature of the air, P2 and T2. It's important that I mention again, in this frame, the shock is seen to be moving. To make the shock stationary, we need to subtract its velocity with itself. That is, U sub S minus U sub S equals to 0. By doing this, it is as if we are moving with the shock itself and we don't see it moving from our point of view. All the other velocities need to be subtracted with the shock velocity as well, as shown in this picture on the right. By doing this, we also see that the main direction of motion is that of the gas moving from left to right. Initially, the main direction is that of the shock wave moving from right to left. To handle this change of direction, we need to multiply all the new velocities v1 prime and v2 prime with negative signs. By doing that, we'll see that these new velocities have positive values, but in the new direction, that is, towards the right. Note that in the new frame, the other properties of the air in the same region do not change. For example, P1 and T1 in the gas frame remain as P1 and T1 in the shock frame. The same goes for P2 and T2. So, the changing of the frames only affects the velocity of the air and the shock. Okay, let me summarize what I've said before in the list down here. These are the four key steps to solve the moving shock problem. First, convert the frame from the gas frame into the shock frame. Second, subtract all velocities with the shock velocity, U sub S. Third, change the direction of motion in the frame by multiplying all the velocities with the negative sign. Finally, you'll get a stationary shock problem, which you can now solve. One last thing I want to mention here is that this is a really basic problem on the moving shock, where the gas in region 1 is not moving. That is, V1 equals to 0. We will deal with more advanced problems later, where V1 is not zero. Now that we have the shock frame set up, what do we do next? In this picture here, it shows the same scenario as before, looking into the problem from the point of view of the shock. But before we can actually solve the problem as a stationary shock problem, we need to convert all the velocities into their Mach numbers. Here, V1 prime is converted into M1 prime and V2 prime converted into M2 prime. Okay, now let's pause for a moment to think carefully about the problem we have in front of us. Let's say we have a simple problem where we are given V1 equals to 0, U sub S is known, P1 and T1 are also known problem is normally for us to find the values of V2, P2, and T2. When we convert the gas frame into the shock frame, as we have here, we can find V1 prime because we already know V1 and U sub S. From V1 prime, we can then find M1 prime. Next, we can use the stationary normal shock table to find the other parameters in region 2. Specifically, we can find M2 prime and the static pressure and temperature ratios P2 over P1 and T2 over T1. 
from the known values of P1 and T1, we can then find out what P2 and T2 are. Also, we can now find V2 prime since we already know M2 prime and T2. Now that we've calculated all that parameters, it turns out that our problem is not yet fully solved because we are still working in the shock frame. What we need to do is to reconvert back into the original gas frame. In this frame, the only unknown parameter left to find is V2. But this shouldn't be too much of a problem to solve because we have previously defined V2 prime equals to U sub S minus V2. So we can reverse this equation to calculate V2. Once this is done, only then the solution to the whole problem is complete. We can also come back to a question we asked earlier. What if V1 is not zero? Instead of straight away giving you the answer, I think it's best that at this moment you pause this video for a while and try to come up with your own answer. I'll be depriving you of your aha moment if I simply tell you the answer. So, have you thought deeply about this? If yes, that's great. If not, let's pause the video for much longer. Okay, now let's assume that you have thought about this problem and come up with your own answer. Yes, you're right. The strategy to solve the problem is straightforward. It's just a simple substitution problem. Instead of having V1 equals to 0, you just substitute V1 with its new non-zero value and proceed with the same procedure as you've done before. Just make sure that you also assign V1 with its correct positive or negative sign. What's more, the variety of problems can be added up simply by changing the given parameters of the problem. Say, for example, instead of giving region 1 as the known parameters, we can start off a problem by giving region 2 as the known parameters, with U sub S also known, and try to find instead the unknowns in region 1. Or, we can start with the regions 1 and 2 as the known values, and we can try to find what the shock speed is. This way of rearranging the knowns and unknowns of a problem can add variety and difficulty to a problem and in many ways making it more challenging and I suppose more interesting. But once you have truly understood the basic principles and the basic strategy of solving the moving shock problem, I believe you would be able in principle to solve any problems on moving shock waves.